everyone, Danielle from Glembo coming to you from home for our Glembo from Home program. Today we're going to be working in our feature exhibit, Metamorphosis, Contemporary Canadian Portraits. We're going to do a bit of a walking tour around the gallery and then we're going to go through an activity and learn how to do gestural drawing. Hope you enjoy! Metamorphosis is the latest collaboration between Glembo and the Library and Archives of Canada and explores themes of transformation and change over time through subjects of mortality, renewal, or commemoration. Although this is a portrait exhibit, we will notice as we walk through that traditional portraits, as many people understand them, are included. However, there are also portraits that are portrayed in different ways. A portrait is not always a photograph or a drawing of a person. Sometimes a portrait can be items or symbols grouped together, like in this piece, Quattro Family Portrait Number no. 2 by David Neal. These symbols represent members of his family with each symbol and color containing meaning. As we move forward, we will start to see more traditional portraits in the sense that they are photographs with these photographs presenting transformation through clothing and representation of culture to create discussion and dialogue surrounding societal norms. As we move on to more traditional portraits such as these, we try and understand something more about this woman. Who is she? Can we tell anything about her from her surroundings, from her picture? As you create a portrait as an artist, is it important to include clues for your viewers? Masks can be portraits as well, again with materials and symbolism taking center stage in this piece. Moving forward, this is one of my favorite pieces. It's called Everything in My Father's Wallet, Everything in My Wallet by Sara Angelucci. This piece is a grouping of scans of everything in the artist's father's wallet and her wallet, creating two portraits of a father and daughter. When we start looking at this piece, what can we tell about this person? Do we know anything about them? Can we learn anything about them? A portrait doesn't always have to be a photograph or a drawing. It can also be a grouping of their things that represent them as a person. In the next piece, this is one of my favorite ways to create a portrait. When you see someone inside of a room, you look at all of the things in the background. What do you think we can tell about this man? What can we tell about these people? Yes, they're here in the room, but when they lo we look around the room closely, what can we discover about them? What kinds of stories do their belongings tell? If I were to come into your room, what could I tell about you? If I were to come to your house, go into your bedroom, start looking around at all the colors you've painted or at the posters on your walls, do you love music? Do you like sports? What do you think I could discover about you? We're going to finish off our tour at a drawing and finally a painting, both of people, because this will be our focus of our activity today. We're going to work with this piece called Muscleman. In this painting, there is so much movement. There's gestures and semi-abstract body shapes. We're going to learn how to draw a three-dimensional person on a two-dimensional surface, meaning that we're going to take a flat piece of paper and learn how to make something look 3D, like it's popping out of the page. Are you excited? I know I am. Stick with me and we'll be right back with a demo. So we're actually gonna focus on the man who's on the right. And what we'll start to look at is I want you to just look for the really basic shapes. So look for, and at his head you can see a circle, and then on his left shoulder you can sort of see this oval shape, and into his shoulder a little bit more of a circle. And I just want you to use your eyes to look around and look for those basic shapes. 
check out how he's standing, that one arm is a little bit longer than the other because of the way that he's turned and twisted. This will change the way that we uh, draw him. When we draw him, I want you to look for these really basic shapes, but I want you to start with really just light lines and have a lot of fun with it. So we're gonna just start with this circle for his head. And then we're gonna move into his uh, oval on his shoulder. And then another bit of a circle, a larger circle for his actual shoulder. Sorry, this is the top of his shoulder and his real shoulder. And then his huge muscles, which are like a big oval shape. And then if you look, his forearm is quite small. So we're gonna get a little bit more of an oval in there and then into his hand. And remember, just have a lot of fun with this, you guys. You're not a machine. The more pencil marks, the better. We've got another big oval up here and then another uh, big shoulder. And if you look at this front arm, it's quite a bit bigger than the back arm. And that's because we're looking at something called perspective. So if a person is standing to the side like this, their arm in front will always be bigger than their back arm. And that's kind of a circular oval as well. And then we're gonna get into his forearm, which is quite big. And we'll wanna get a lot of these curved lines. Now remember, in nature, when we're drawing nature or humans or anything that is not man-made, there are no straight lines. Straight lines do not exist in nature. We made them as humans. So when we're drawing uh, a person or any kind of nature, it's really good to remember to keep your movement nice and loose and to get those really nice curved lines in there. And these curved lines will start to help you with your perspective, which means the way that he's twisted and how it goes back in space. It will also help with the movement of uh, the piece. So you can see as you start to add your curved lines, and remember, every time you make a mark, take a look at your piece, painting, photograph, whatever you're drawing from, make your mark, look up again, make another mark. Follow your eyes, just do it very methodically, one section at a time. So now I'm into his leg, and uh, there's a bit of a circle on his knee here, and then down into his calf, and a big part of his leg here, and another calf muscle, and into his foot that's kind of pointed down, okay? And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. None of this has to be perfect. We're not machines. So, then we're gonna get his back leg, and if you look really carefully, you can see that it's tucked behind the other leg. That will help with your perspective as well, okay? Now, he's looking okay. Maybe circle this out a little. Then what we're gonna do is, once you have it really filling the page as much as possible, I want you to start to go back in and press a little harder and look for, there's a line where his neck is and almost just start to kind of outline his body, okay? And now you can get your pencil marks a little harder so that you can start to see his body really come together, okay? And remember to see, take a look, always looking, always looking, where are the lines that are in front of the other lines? Would it make sense that his arm goes back behind his other arm? Where does his chest meet his shoulder here? And then tuck behind this big, huge bicep right here, okay? And you're just gonna keep marking that out. And you can start to add some more details as you go now, okay? How's that looking, guys? I think it's pretty good. So, I want you to practice this at home. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters, whoever you can find to maybe do a pose. How about you do this pose here? I want you to do this pose. 
and I want you to get your friends and family to do this pose and your brothers and sisters to do this pose. And you get start to get a sense of what a body looks like in real life. And then I want you to practice your sketches, okay? This is called, these are a little bit like gestural drawings, but this is really just looking for basic shapes, basic shapes, and then we can come in and then as you start to finalize it and finish it off, you can add in some details and some shading if you'd like. And what we want you to do is, we want you to hashtag and tag Glenbow and then send in your images, okay? Because we want to see how these turn out. So this week we're focusing on portraits. We're going to be coming to you every Wednesday at 10 a.m with all kinds of different things. Some days it will be artifact, some days it will be art, okay? I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and we'll see you next week. Bye.